Well, good evening. I'm Nancy Grace. I want to thank you for being with us. Bombshell tonight. Remember the case of six-year-old beauty queen John Bonet Ramsey found strangled, beaten to death, apparently the victim of a brutal sex assault right there in the basement of her own home. Ten years later, no justice for John Bonet. Bombshell tonight in the last hours, we get proof. A Colorado grand jury votes to indict John Bonet's parents, John and Patsy Ramsey. In every case, parents are always suspected initially. The child beauty queen was found dead in the basement of her family's Boulder home. Do you know how long she's been gone? No, I don't. Please, we just got out and she right here. Oh my God, please. A Colorado judge now agreeing to unseal a grand jury indictment. The grand jury had voted to indict Jean Benet's parents, John and Patsy Ramsey, on charges of child abuse resulting in death. There is a killer on the Absolutely. loose. But if I were a resident of Boulder, I will tell my friends to keep okay. keep your babies close to you. Today, proof that a Colorado grand jury chose to indict John and Patsy Ramsey. The other bombshell, the elected district attorney at that time, chose not to go forward with the prosecution of John and Patsy Ramsey. This after the grand jury decides to charge them. Now, later, another district attorney exonerates John and Patsy Ramsey. Straight out to Anna Cabrera, CNN correspondent. Anna, this is stunning. Tell me what happened. Nancy, this is a grand jury indictment from 1999, some 14 years ago that we're just now learning this jury, grand jury, had voted to indict John and Patsy Ramsey. So again, they've been exonerated in this case, but we never knew that the, that the grand jury had initially wanted to indict these two parents, the parents of John Benet Ramsey. Now, the grand jury, in these couple of documents that were released, basically said they wanted to indict the, the parents on charges of child abuse resulting in death, as well as being an accessory to the crime. So the grand jury didn't necessarily say that the parents committed the murder, but they perhaps in some way may have helped the child's killer finish the crime and then impeding in the investigation, Nancy. With me on the scene, Anna Cabrera, to Jean Casares, CNN correspondent, also out in the field. Jean, exactly what do the documents say? Let's lay it out. Well, it's fascinating because they're saying that John and Patsy Ramsey unreasonably, knowingly, recklessly, feloniously allowed John Bonet to be placed in a position where she should, could be the victim of child abuse that then could result in her death. And secondly, in another charge, that then they assisted a person so that they would not be investigated, found, prosecuted, or convicted, or even sentenced in the first degree murder of John Bonet or child abuse resulting in death. Joining me right now is a very special guest. It is Dr. Henry Lee. As you all know, he is a renowned forensic science professor and he worked on the case. He has reviewed the autopsy, even consulted with the district attorney's office. Dr. Henry Lee, it's so wonderful to talk to you again. What do you make of the Thank fact that a grand you. jury had planned, actually returned indictments on John and Patsy Ramsey? The elected district attorney decided not to go forward with that prosecution. Well, uh, I agree with the grand jury's funding, but uh, also I agree with their, you know, state attorney's decision because uh, scientific evidence we cannot prove uh, this actually is a murder case. What do you mean by that, Dr. Henry Lee? Well, it's an untimely death. And uh, what caused the death, of course, uh, the medical examiner already found out, but the manner of the death, whether or not that's a homicide or accidental death, it's possible. But physical evidence alone, uh, I did my uh, with the district attorney and the investigator from Boulder, Colorado many times. We have many meetings uh, 
the consensus uh, decision is we just don't have enough evidence to go for a trial. Well, let me ask you this, Dr. Henry Lee. What would have led a grand jury to indict them? The indictment, if you, I did not look at what the release, whatever I heard just now, your correspondence says it's something that will, they know about this test and uh, maybe uh, have knowledge about it, did not say they are the murderer. Mm -hmm. That's two mm -hmm. different. Um, different story. One says you know about this case, and the other say you actually murder your child. That's a more hmm. serious charge. We have to have enough evidence. We are taking your calls out to Steph in California. Hi, Steph. What's your question? Yeah, I was just wondering. Um, and I kind of wondering, um, is it possible um, that maybe um, um, mom and dad? Of John Monet possibly could have murdered John Monet over money. What do you mean over money? Like um, because she was like the little queen, you know, and she was doing all these patches and um, little beauty um, um little t I guess little tyke um or um beauty patches. I kind of wondering maybe you know um, um jealousy probably you know be so popular. Jealousy. Okay, now let, let me try to identify your question. Uh, you're saying first, did they murder her for money? I, I don't. There was not. My understanding there's no life insurance policy on her. So why would they murder her for money? And jealousy. They were the ones putting her in the beauty contest. So what do you mean murder over jealousy? Like she, you know, so you know, like you know, so popular. You know, she was winning all these. Um, probably maybe winning all these trophies. You know, that's what I was thinking. Because so are you are you suggesting that the mother killed her because she was jealous of her popularity? Probably. Okay. Um, well, let me address I'm, that. Let me address that. If the mother had been jealous of her popularity due to the beauty pageants, I would guess the mother would probably just quit putting her in the beauty pageants. Patsy Ramsey was the one putting her in the pageants. It was her idea. She decided to do it, not John Ramsey. It was Patsy Ramsey that would take her to all of these beauty pageants and, and orchestrate the whole thing. So I would think money would not have been a motive and jealousy over her popularity would not have been a motive. Um, to Pat Saunders, clinical psychologist, you know, when parents do kill their children, there doesn't really have to be a motive. It could be anger. It could be frustration. It could be you've been up all night. It could be anything. It doesn't always make sense. There's really never a good motive for murder. I know you're right. It could be bedwetting, and John Bonet wears a, a bedwetter. But you just put a new angle on it for me, and that's the political one. Um, that the DA, the first DA, found that the evidence did not rise to the level of beyond a reasonable doubt. Now I know this community. I've spent time there. It's a very small, upscale, wealthy, tight community. So it's very possible that there were some political and I hate to say it, but perverse activities going on uh, orchestrated by the parents and some other people because we know there were no signs of break-in, there were no footprints. Jumpin' a new her assailant. Everyone, we are taking your calls in a bombshell in the last hours. Just released documents that prove a Colorado grand jury was set to indict John and Patsy Ramsey. Um, to you, Steve Helling, writer with People Magazine, the indictments are not for the murder of John Benet Ramsey. Explain, in layman's terms. Sure, absolutely. Uh, they didn't say that uh, John and Patsy Ramsey murdered John Benet. What they said was that perhaps they put them, put Jean Benet in a situation or in a position where she could be abused and through that they should have known better and she ended up dying because of that. It's not even saying that they were the ones who 
did the abuse. So whatever that situation is, we don't know because everything else has been, you know, has been locked down. We only got four pages worth of documents. We didn't yeah. get yeah. everything. Yeah, and, and, and that right there, Steve Helling, the whole reason behind that is that the judge that decided to release these documents, that they were released because of a FOIA, Freedom of Information mm -hmm. Act request. All right, says that under the law. Under the law, a grand jury action cannot be kept secret, right? So, although we don't get the thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of testimony, of documents, of exhibits, we get anything that is an, uh, an act, an official mm -hmm. act of the grand jury. These pages were signed by the jury for a person. That's why we got them. We still don't know what became, what came before the grand jury, what evidence, what testimony they heard. We have no idea. This is what it says. That John and Patsy Ramsey allowed their child, John Bonet, to be unreasonably placed in a situation that posed a threat of injury to John Bonet's life or health, which resulted in the death of John Bonet and that they rendered assistance to a person knowing the person being assisted had committed and was suspected of the crime of murder in the first degree and child abuse resulting in death. All right, that basically says that the grand jury believes John and Patsy knew who committed the murder, but they were covering for them. And let me just put it out there, I do not think their son, Burke, had anything to do with his sister's death. That's what everybody is going to assume. Uh, you know, uh, very quickly, Patricia Saunders, the likelihood of sibling homicide, sibling side, as it's, uh, as a slang term for it, is extremely low. And when you look at Burke as a child and you look at Jean Bonnet, John Bonet could probably have twisted his arm, not the other way around. So I, I've never believed that Burke had anything to do with that. That is a wild theory that some people proposed. I don't believe it. So the Ramsey's covering up for somebody that murdered their child? That, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, I don't doubt that it would be Bert, uh, for all the reasons you said. And, well, it doesn't make logical sense, but it may make emotional or uh, sexual perverse sense in terms of um, a high-powered pedophile in the community. You never know what goes on inside of people's homes and heads, Nancy. It's ugly, it's unthinkable for us, but it is a possibility. We have never been deemed suspect. We've been said to be under the umbrella of suspicion, whatever that means. Well, it's, it's kind of in no man's land, you know. We lost our daughter. That's the worst possible thing that could have happened to us. Anything that has happened in the aftermath pales by comparison. The six-year-old beauty contestant was found dead in the basement of her upscale Boulder home the day after Christmas. I just, I, I picked her up and I just screamed, the, the, the kind of scream you scream in a dream. A killer never captured. Now more information has surfaced. That a grand jury had voted for an indictment no, of the little girl's parents, John and Patsy Ramsey. No, 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 the charge anticipated no, no, felony no, child abuse no, resulting in death. We think it was a pedophile, we think it was a male. Authorities even officially exonerated the family. Even so, a cloud of suspicion remained. So all that remains is the mystery. Who killed a six-year-old girl in her own home on a snowy Christmas night? In the last hours, a bombshell in the John Bonet case. We learned that a grand jury set to indict John and Patsy Ramsey. The indictments formally handed down, but the elected district attorney decided not to go forward with the charges. Alicia Lawyer is joining me, Lonnie Coombs, former L.A. County prosecutor, Randy Kessler, defense attorney, Atlanta, Trent Copeland, defense attorney, L.A., out to you, Kessler. How often have you heard of the grand jury handing down a true bill and then the elected district attorney not going forward with that? 
It doesn't happen often, and, and a lot of times we don't hear about it because we don't know what the grand jury decided. We're all outraged that this little girl was killed, but we shouldn't let that outrage and our desire for punishment outweigh the prosecutor's decision. He could not convince a jury beyond a reasonable doubt of guilt. He Randy, did the right thing. Randy, Randy, That's I just very simply asked you, have you ever heard of that happening in your years of practice? Have you ever heard of that happening? That's a yes, no. It, but we wouldn't hear about it, Nancy. A lot of times so it happens and we don't know. So I'm going to take that as a no. That's fine. That's fine. All right. It's a no. Okay. Well, can you tell me of a case often. you've heard of? Nope. All right. Okay. That that took. Uh, you know, I'm just a JD. Okay. I'm not a DDS. I don't know how to pull a tooth. All right. So let's just hone in. Let's get the car back in the middle of the road again. Out to you, Lonnie Coombs. What do you make of it? You know, Nancy, I was a prosecutor in L.A. County for 18 years, and I can tell you I never heard of one person in my office going to the grand jury, getting an indictment, and then pulling back and not following through and prosecuting the charges. So for me, it's an unusual, rare, and honestly the only time I've ever heard this happening. Trent? Yeah, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding that. Look, and I, I know Lonnie, and Lonnie's a fantastic prosecutor. I've known him when she practiced here in Los Angeles County. But the truth is, look, it happens when good prosecutors reach the decision that the grand jury got it wrong. And look, okay, and, and I, 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 I ask wanted, you, I, have you ever heard of it happening? Can you name a case where it happened? I've that's never, my question. I've never heard of, okay. I've never heard of it happening. Great. And it's All very, right. very Great. That, rare. That's the question. To Anna Cabrera, joining me there in Boulder, Anna, what do you make of it? Why did the grand jury hand down indictments against John and Patsy Ramsey and the elected DA decided to ignore the indictments? Nancy, here in this state, the grand jury indictment means that the grand jury found probable cause to indict John and Patsy Ramsey on these specific charges. But ultimately, the DA has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they are responsible for the child's death. And ultimately, then DA Alex Hunter did not believe he could prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this is what had happened. And so he basically said there was not sufficient evidence. And Nancy, I think it's important to note that DNA evidence several years later that wasn't even available for the grand jury to take a look at at the time because of the technology advancements that eventually happened, that eventually exonerated mm -hmm. the family in this case. You know what? You're right. Let's talk about the DNA evidence that was found on the scene. What was it and where was it? Anna? It was found on John Benet's clothing, several pieces of her clothing. Now, investigators at the time of the crime had that DNA evidence, but technology didn't allow them to test it. It, it didn't prove any, anything conclusive until 2006-ish. And basically in 2008 is when the family received a letter from then District Attorney Mary Lacey saying that, dis, that DNA evidence pointed to an unidentified, unrelated male as the suspect. Welcome back, everyone. In the last hour's bombshell, John Benet Ramsey's parents were set to be indicted by a Colorado grand jury. The district attorney decided not to go forward to Dr. Henry Lee, who worked on the case. Dr. Henry Lee, that testing in 98 showed there was DNA evidence in John Benet's underwear. Many speculated where it came from. In fact, many speculated it may have even come from the factory where the underwear was made. What do you make of that DNA in her underwear? Well, the DNA was found on her underwear, however, wasn't from a semen stand. So, just a biological stand have male DNA. Doesn't mean that's definitely from sexual assault, a semen ejaculation from male. Could be any trace transfer. Because in 1998, STRs, short tendon repeat DNA with the so-called uh, trace DNA or uh, touch DNA now become more sensitive technique which will find some, uh, some result. They found some result on the panty. But doesn't necessarily is a male ejaculate. In addition, the panty is size 10 to 14. As you, Nancy, you recall, John Benet only seven years old. 